So I'm going to give you guys a history lesson. And the character I'm going to talk about is Tolarian Community College, who you, might, you guys probably know who he is. Um, we were all in a private Facebook group together. And one of the main discussion topics was the monthly magic box. So the monthly magic box, in case you don't remember what it was, it was a box of basically on sale items from Dave and Adams. And it was being, and here, here's how the scam worked. They would get all, they would get Tolarian, they would get the manager, they would get all the big YouTubers, minus myself. I turned it down four different times. I even like, you know, they were going to send me a box and then I, I just said, don't, don't worry about it. And I have this in email and in many older videos, I've screenshotted the emails. When you talk about this product, it was a very cheap product. You know, they were selling it for 20, depending on the subscription level, but anywhere from 20 to $25 a month. And it would be a subscription model. And the products in it, in itself was probably less than $5, but then the shipping, you know, the, the box that comes in is about $10 or $12.99 time. So the majority of the money was spent on the shipping because of the box they were using. They were using the uh, small flat rate, I think at the time it was $12.99. And so I think it was $25 a box, unless you subscribe for like two years or something crazy. So all these big YouTubers, on magic they were promoting this box later i found out that via the private facebook group we were part of that no one was getting paid because i made a comment you guys suck you know you shouldn't you know that this is a scam i don't know how you can take the money and then to learn community college commented which i screenshotted there's no money and i commented back what do you mean there's no money like aren't you guys isn't everyone being paid for this and then i think um someone called MTG McQuacks. I don't know if you guys remember that or someone else, maybe Wedge. I don't know, Wedge wasn't really, it was somebody else. It was like, I think maybe Rocks and Boxing. They commented, hey, no one's getting paid. And they were, so they were promoting this box and Tolarian Community College now has deleted or private the videos. Um, and the scam worked this way. In the beginning, they would send the boxes out. But towards the month four, they would only send the boxes and they would send them early to the influencers or YouTubers. Like to Tulare, so Tulare Community College always got his box on time. He was probably first on the list that they sent the box, but everyone who signed up did not get their box. So many people didn't get their box for months and months of boxes. They paid for four months and they didn't get, they did finally received one box. And that was a scam. So in terms of like what it was, was it just had, it's kind of like these scams that we know today where you have a influencer character, you know, maybe a phase K or something trying to sell you save the kid token. And, you know, him and his friends, you know, or, you know, Tico, whatever, whoever his friends are, Bryce Gum, um, they are promoting the token and they're saying this is a great token, but they're, on, they're also getting out. This has existed since the dawn of time. So two things, two reasons I want to make this video. One reason, because that was back in the age where no one was sponsored. So imagine Tolarian Community College promoting a crappy product that he knew was a crappy product because in the private Facebook group, there was discussion that, hey, you know, people are not getting their boxes. So I didn't know that, right? Because I wasn't part, I didn't do the monthly magic box. So I didn't, I told my subscribers not to do it, but they had told their subscribers to do it and they would get private messages to Tolarian Community. So after Tolarian Community calling makes this monthly magic box, says how great of a value it is, gives it A plus rating. Then he would get comments in private from people saying, hey, you know, Brian, I didn't get the box. Like, can you help me? Like, do you know? And so basically he's doing customer service for this monthly magic box service, which he wasn't getting paid for. And it was probably four months in. So this continued for almost like a year where they started getting these emails. They started getting these DMS and messages across their social media. And they posted it on the private Facebook to see like if other people had the same experience. So like Tolarian wanted to know, Hey, like other people promoting the product, are you guys like, do you have subscribers that are not getting this product either? And it would say, yes. 
So what I did was I screenshotted you know, all of this and made a video. And this upset Brian greatly, as well as the other people. I think MTG McQuacks was not happy and uh, Weds definitely wasn't happy. But I thought it would be a great video, right? Hey, you have all these people, they know that something wrong is happening. Because by definite, I mean, they were not sending, so the scam worked this way. They would only send the boxes and sometimes they would send better boxes or the, you know, the contents of the boxes would be a little bit better, but they would, the only people receiving them were the YouTubers or the people on Twitter. And they were sending them to a lot of people. The monthly magic box was huge. I saw the account later on, which then I made another video. They received something like $25,000 a month in auto renewal renewals. That's like insane, but that's what happened. I have a picture of the criminal at a Christmas party dressed in a Christmas sweater. That's how much of my investigation. And then I, yeah, before I published that video, exposing the monthly magic box, I told him all of this uh, months in advance, including to Larry. I, I put it, I, I sent him the, I sent, I put it in a post with the picture of the guy, the criminal and thing, and he had been charged with felonies or what not. And no one cared. They continue to promote the month for whatever reason. Again, they were not getting paid, or at least that's what they told me. Now, do I know that's true or not? I don't know because I wasn't getting, I, I never promoted the box. But that was the precursor to the Pico trade, which I think is like kind of a fake crypto. If you think of Pico points, right? Pico, I mean, the only difference is instead of calling Pico points, they call it, call it Pico coin or something. And then people, it would be a cryptocurrency that you could use for magic the gathering. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it would even go up in price if you just na renamed it Pico, uh, Pico coin. <laughs> Instead of Pico points, it would be called Pico point, coin. So that was kind of my realization that, wait a second, everyone's mentality, you know, this group was a fun group of content creators to hang out and chat because they love magic. At that point, I realized that, wait a second, I'm like the only one who's like hanging out, having fun. Like you know, I, we used to do um, uh, Google chats all the time. Mana source used to be on my Google chat. H HQ would come over the now, you know, infamous Jeremy Hambly. I have him on my video chat, like on one of my old videos on the channel. And new law student, I had a bunch of them, right? Just like so many of them that were deleted. But then that's when I realized, wait a second, these people are selling out for like a box of like five cent candy. <laughs> Something is wrong. And of course, the mana source, you know, we know his journey to um, his back breaking journey, if you will, and how he doesn't listen to his doctors, he doesn't exercise, he doesn't have health insurance, probably still. Yet people donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to him. And people still donate to his Patreon in such large chunks. And that really had me like that had me separated from the rest of the pack, if you will, because I didn't, I never did puker point. Pico trade. Jeremy actually did Pico trade. Um, I was offered a lot of Pico points, like a shit ton of Pico points, um, to promote it because at that time Tolarian had kind of abandoned ship. The Man of Source had abandoned ship, so they were going to like second tier <laughs> or you know third tier or whoever they could get right to continue to promote it. And I was like, ah oh, man, I'm not gonna do this. And there was like Pico Light. I mean, there was a lot of Pico like products that were coming out because. Again, Pico was a huge, huge platform at the time. That's how people traded cards. Uh, and I I mean, the, I don't think there was anything wrong with the platform. I think there was a lot of things wrong with the people operating. It's kind of like government bailout money. Everyone thinks that this bail, that 100% of 100, $100, whenever they have a bailout for $4 trillion, how much does actually goes in the hands of the American people? Well, let me tell you about the postmaster general who gave a contract to his previous company for $120 million when his previous company was a piece of trash. So if the postmaster general has ability to give $120 million contracts to his friends and family, then you know who else is giving contracts to their friends and family? Are there people we know of who have behaved like this in the past? And the answer is yes. There are many people in Congress who have friends and family. One good example I have of this, I'm just gonna go on tangent, and this pisses me off a lot, is the, uh, when her, some hurricane hit Puerto Rico really hard and the US government needed to provide 
some like insane amount of meals. I think it was like 10 million meals. And then somebody had a friend of a friend who was like somebody's grandmother or uh, aunt. And she had one employee herself. She had previously not supplied, you know, milk. So she, she wasn't this grift. She was supposed to supply the Marines with like a tote bag or something. It didn't happen. And then she was actually on the list of vendors you do not want to use for the government contracts. But she got a contract to supply 10 million meals to starving people hit by a hurricane in Puerto Rico. At the time she got the contract, it was just one person herself. A hundred million dollar contract was given to supply 10 million meals to people who actually desperately need the, 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 these meals. So she tried to outsource, she tried to do, but she didn't have the connections, she didn't know how. And honestly, she was a terrible businesswoman, like some of the actions she chose. And then after, you know, the, they took the contract away because they very quickly realized, oh, this is not, this is like one person. They then, she then sued the US government. I don't know if she won or not. She did win for $100 million. Then that's taxpayer money that we had to give her for a contract she should have never received. So it's kind of a win-win, right? Now, instead of getting a million, a hundred million dollars to produce 10 million meals, she got a hundred million dollars for doing nothing. Again, I'm not sure if she won the case. I didn't look into it, but that's kind of the, the corruption we see. The people in power, like the people in charge of Pico Trade, they were always going to scam their user base. It was guaranteed in the history of every, in the history of histories, there's never been a scenario where you make fake cryptocurrency and you're not scamming. That you have the control over how much of this fake currency exists in the market and you're not going to inflate. We've seen this with governments in Africa, governments in South America, where, hey, well, we can print more money, so let's do it. And let's take out some money ourselves. So in the history of histories, including the US government, when people think, oh, wow, one trillion dollar infrastructure bailout. My question is how much of that is actually going to go to contractors who deserve it? And how much of that is going to go to friends and family who own, you know, hey, I own, I have an LLC. It's just me. All right, let's give you a $120 million contract. Are you good? Cool. So you think unemployment is bad, wait until you see the bailout for infrastructure and how the money is going to be spent and who receives large, I mean, $120 million for the postmaster's own company. I, that's a little obvious, right? Many times there'll be a company of a company of a sub company and they'll hide it in some like offshore account. So it's a little bit more difficult to trace. You have to do actual journalism. But uh, in the postmaster case, it was uh, pretty obvious that this is a, uh, was his ex company because that was on his, it was actually on his LinkedIn resume. <laughs> so they just were like, wait a second, <laughs> isn't this the company you awarded the $120 million contract to is on your LinkedIn profile? I think that's how they cost it, dude, was on LinkedIn. My guys. <laughs>